It was getting dark outside. An autumn cold evening was approaching. Mia, where are you rushing off to again? asked Chad, noticing his wife eating on the go and constantly glancing at her watch. My friend Julia asked me to stop by. Remember, I told you we lived together in the orphanage, asked for help with some housework after a difficult surgery I couldn't refuse, Mia replied, looking at her husband imploringly. Mia, are you her servant? I don't understand you, Chad retorted. Darling, I won't be gone long. I'll be back soon, Mia said, before running out of the house a few minutes later. Chad was the son of a general. His parents were against their son marrying Mia, an orphan from the orphanage. They had long predicted a career in diplomacy for Chad and dreamed of him marrying Milena, the daughter of a well-known businessman in town. Before meeting Mia, Chad was not averse to marrying Milena, for business, as his father put it. However, Chad wanted to pursue a career in business, not diplomacy. Mr. Rendon, Milena's father, persuaded him to do so. Chad received a brilliant education abroad, had a sharp mind and an excellent memory. Mr. Rendon took it upon himself to hone the knowledge of his future son-in-law in practice, teaching him the basics and pitfalls of business. The man not only gave instructions, but also invested his own money in a new joint project with Chad. And so the business began to grow. Shopping centres opened one after another, and profits grew, settling in the pockets of the businessmen. Well, son-in-law, soon we'll be related not only financially, but also by blood, Mr. Rendon liked to say, smiling contentedly. He considered Chad the perfect husband for his spoiled daughter, Milena, but there was no love between the young couple. Well, it's okay, daughter. Only losers came up with the fairy tale of love and are fooling themselves with it. Chad is a great match for you, and as for love, you're both young, beautiful, and passionate. What can't be cured must be endured. However, Mr. Rendon's predictions were not meant to come true. Everything was turned upside down by Chad's chance encounter with a provincial girl named Mia at the cinema. She worked at a factory and rented a small room in a communal apartment. Love ignited in Chad's heart suddenly, even at the first meeting. What made Mia so attractive to him? Perhaps it was her kindness, sincerity, meekness, modesty and tenderness, all the things that were completely absent in Milena. They had only been seeing each other for a week, but Chad, falling in love like a boy, realised that he couldn't live without Mia. The feeling was mutual. Mia was sure that she had met the man of her dreams, the one she constantly read about in romance novels. And now it had happened in real life. After several meetings, Chad proposed to Mia without telling his parents. When his parents found out what had happened, they were emotionally shocked. Are you insane? They screamed at him. You are going to exchange Milena for this orphan without family? How will we face Mr. Rendon? He invested so much in you. Marrying this pauper is a disaster for everything, both business and normal life. But despite his parents' desperate objections, Chad did not cancel his decision to marry Mia. His love for her was a thousand times stronger than his parents' attacks. Mr. Rendon reassured Chad's parents, saying, Come on, don't be silly. He'll get married and then get divorced, I bet. He dreamed of a beautiful future for his daughter and would do everything to reunite Chad and Milena again. No guests attended Mia and Chad's wedding. Chad's parents barely crossed the threshold of the registry office and did not stay there for more than ten minutes. But the young couple was happy together, despite everything. Chad rented a spacious apartment in a new building, and life flowed calmly and joyfully, 
like a family. Chad and Mia seemed to dissolve into each other and were already thinking about having a child. The peaceful idyll of Mia was suddenly interrupted by a phone call. Mia, hello. You don't recognise me. I'm Scott, your brother. I returned from prison three days ago. Mia's heart sank. She knew how much Chad's relatives hated her, and she was afraid to reveal the whole truth about her family, saying only that she lived in an orphanage. Mia hid that her mother was in prison for causing serious bodily harm to her stepfather, and that she died there. Mia also did not reveal that her brother was also in prison for robbery. The girl was sure that if Chad's relatives knew about this, they would never have allowed her to marry Chad and be happy. And now, this call from the past. Mia, why are you silent? Maybe you're not happy. I heard you married a millionaire. You probably have a lot of money. Can't you share with your own brother? I need a little bit. I also need a corner to live for a short time. I'll look around and return the money right away. Mia did not dare to refuse her brother and quietly said, I'll think about how to help you. Since she and Chad got married, she left her job at the factory at her husband's request. Instead of a salary, Mia now received money from her husband on a personal card. She had been supporting her wayward brother Scott with this money for over a month. She even rented a small apartment in an old building for him. What's wrong, Mia? Can't you buy new dresses for yourself? Chad asked her, noticing that his wife was not updating her wardrobe at all. Why spend so much right away? I have a lot of normal clothes, Mia evasively replied. And Chad smiled. You're right, Mia. You're beautiful in any clothes. The only thing that worried Chad was his wife's frequent departures from home, especially in the last month. And today she had reason to leave the house again because her friend Julia asked for help. Chad knew Mia to be a kind and compassionate person who cared about the troubles of others, but he never expected her to go to such lengths. In fact, once again, Mia had gone to great lengths to help her brother by buying him groceries. She knew that if she gave him money, he would spend it on alcohol. Mia felt heavy-hearted. She knew her husband did not approve of her absences, and she was risking losing him. She tried to push away the negative thoughts, but they kept returning with renewed strength. Finally, Mia promised herself that she would tell her husband about her strange trips the next day. Little did she know, Melena's relatives did not accept Chad's decision to live with Mia. In fact, Mr. Rendon was hatching a cunning plan against Mia. He wanted to frame her for infidelity and thereby cause a divorce between Chad and Mia. Mr. Rendon's driver, Paul, accidentally saw Mia on the street with an unknown man. Just in case, he took a couple of photos and reported everything to his boss. Well done, Paul. Excellent. You deserve a bonus from me, rejoiced Mr. Rendon. I'm lucky. I don't even have to come up with anything. The fish itself swam into the nets. Paul, work a little more as a private detective. Watch Mia carefully. Where does she go when she goes out on the street? Maybe she's visiting someone. The driver, of course, was happy to earn extra money and immediately agreed. That fateful evening, Paul followed Mia and recorded the address of the house and apartment. He passed this information on to his boss. Thank you, Mr. Rendon said, even more pleased. The next day, as soon as Chad entered the office, Mr. Rendon told him everything. Take a look at who your wife was spending time with, Mr. Rendon sneered. I think it's just a coincidence, nothing more, Chad replied calmly. Don't think about it, just check it out for yourself. I have the address, said Mr. Rendon, handing Chad a piece of paper. 
Chad refused to believe what was happening. He had no doubts about his wife's fidelity. However, the words of his failed father-in-law became a thorn in his heart. The dull pain in his chest didn't go away for several days. Finally, Chad decided to secretly go to the specified address without telling Mia. On the day Mia decided to tell Chad the truth, he did not come home from work on time. Mia, I'll be delayed for a little while today. I have a lot of work to do. Yes, of course, dear, and I'll go to the store. Do you remember? You complained about my clothes. So I'll take a walk and have a look, Mia said. Again, Chad was completely confused. He did not believe the photos or the words, as they could all be fake. Of course, he had to see everything with his own eyes. After some time, Chad disguised himself as a pizza delivery man and went to the specified address. Who is it? asked a rough male voice. Pizza delivery, please open up. I didn't order anything. Please open up, then you'll make a note of the refusal. The door creaked open. At the doorstep stood a young man with an unkempt appearance and emanating the smell of alcohol. Chad entered the room where the man shouted, What do you think you're doing? Chad paid him no attention. Instead, he saw the girl standing by the window. She turned around. Mia, how could you? I trusted you, and you... Chad, I'll explain everything. Please, stay here, begged the girl. However, Chad just shook his head and rushed down the stairs onto the street. Something unimaginable was happening in his soul. He felt like life was over. The overwhelming emotions almost caused him to have an accident. An hour later, Mia came home and tearfully begged her husband to listen to her. She said that Scott was her own brother, but Chad didn't believe a single word. He decided to end his marriage once and for all and break up with Mia completely. Although he loved his wife, he was ready to forgive everything except infidelity. Get your suitcase and leave. I'll announce the divorce, Chad said in a cold, unfamiliar voice. Mia quickly threw a few things into the suitcase and slowly walked away. Her body didn't obey and her legs became like cotton wool. Behind her, she heard the sound of a door slamming shut behind her. The girl sat down on a bench hugged her head with her hands and burst into tears. A phone call brought her back to reality. It's Chad! Chad! He's changed his mind! Mia cried out. But unfortunately, it wasn't him. It was her friend, Julia. Hey, Mia, how are you? Julia cheerfully chattered. Mia couldn't take it and cried even harder into the phone. Hey, are you home? I'll be there in ten minutes. Since childhood, Mia always shared her most intimate emotional experiences with Julia. This time was no exception. Yes, you messed up everything. And your little brother, that scoundrel, got involved. Mia, don't beat yourself up like this. Maybe everything will be okay. Chad must understand that there was no infidelity. If you have nowhere to live now, move in with me. I live alone. The apartment is small but cosy. Julia kept talking and speaking with her inherent optimism, trying to lift Mia's spirits. But Mia refused to accept what had happened. She didn't lose hope and waited for her beloved. She was sure that Chad would come for her and take her back. Naively, almost childishly, but the girl believed with all her heart in the fairy tale she had invented. Days passed one by one, and with each day, Mia's financial situation worsened. Even small expenses seemed catastrophic as the remnants of the money given to her by Chad melted away. Julia, I need to find a job, Mia said, realising that waiting for her lost happiness wouldn't fill her stomach. Yes, Julia replied. I agree, my friend. We can't go on like this for much longer. 
Julia worked as a nurse in a hospital, but her salary was barely enough to pay for their apartment and groceries. Meanwhile, Mia wandered around the city searching for work, receiving rejection after rejection. She was particularly hurt when her former factory turned her away after the HR manager found out that she was no longer the wife of a millionaire. Desperate, Mia sat down on a bench in the park and watched the passers-by with tearful eyes. A grey-haired man of respectable age approached her and asked, Miss, are you okay? Mia silently nodded and told the first person she met that she really needed a job. If you like, come to our community with me. I heard from our concierge that they need a janitor. Do you agree? Yes, of course. As a janitor, Mia worked tirelessly. Within a few days, she rubbed large blisters, but it didn't bother her. At least she had her own piece of bread and wouldn't be a burden on Julia. But one day, Mia suddenly felt sick, dizzy, and barely made it to the bench. After a few seconds, the malaise went away, and Mia returned to work. In the evening, the short attacks repeated. Dear, something's not right. Are you pregnant, perhaps? Julia suspected trouble. Mia was horrified at the thought, but soon her fears were confirmed. Physically, you probably can't work any more, Julia sighed. Even she, an optimist in life, was upset. Where could they get the money to support the child? However, she tried not to show her gloomy mood to her friend. Mia was thinking about something else entirely. I need to tell Chad about the baby. He'll find out and be happy, and we'll be together again. Julia seemed to read her mind. Why should you be the only one carrying this burden? The child has a father, and he should also be involved in its life. I agree, Julia. I just need to see Chad. Everything will be the same as before. But Chad's mobile phone had not been answered since their breakup. So Mia mustered up the courage and went to his parents' house to find out where Chad could be found. Chad's mother opened the door and immediately attacked Mia, not letting her say a word. How dare you come here, you ungrateful girl! You deceived my son. What more do you want? Mia was stunned by the greeting, but found the strength to respond. I need to talk to Chad and tell him he will be a father and you will be a grandmother. What? The woman turned purple her voice trembling with indignation. Tell your lover you have the child, then deal with him yourself. Tears welled up in Mia's eyes, and she could barely hold them back. Anyway, if you came here, take this. Chad's mother handed Mia a few sheets of fine paper. What's this? Mia asked, confused. Divorce papers. You won't have to go to court the woman replied indifferently. Also, Chad will soon marry a girl who is truly worthy of him, so don't come here any more. Mia didn't remember how she made it to Julia's house. Everything was a blur. Today she buried her last chance for a happy life. All that was left was a ridiculous existence. What are you talking about, Mia? What ridiculous existence? Julia encouraged her friend. But money, what will we live on? Mia worried. As a single mother, the state will pay you. And I work. Maybe I'll take on two jobs. We'll live. We'll raise the baby. No worse than others. Julia supported her friend as best she could. In reality, she didn't believe her own words and was no less worried than Mia. But it was Julia's support that gave Mia the strength not to fall into depression. Despite her friend's persistent urging to give up work, Mia worked as a janitor until almost the very end of her pregnancy. On New Year's Eve, she gave birth to a daughter, whom the friends decided to name Sarah. Mia and Julia adored the little girl, but it was hard to provide for herself and her child. 
One day there was a knock on the door and Scott was standing on the doorstep. Hi, forgive me. I know you think I'm a monster because of me. You lost your husband. But people change and I've changed for the better. You know, I'm not rich at all, but I'll help as much as I can. Mia couldn't refuse his help and she had no choice. Thus, three years passed. They were difficult, but at the same time, happy for Julia and Mia. They raised Sarah together and tried to deal with life's troubles together. Scott often came to visit them and helped as much as he could. Mia forgave him a long time ago. One day, Scott was walking on a crosswalk and intended to go to Mia and Julia's house. Suddenly, he heard the screech of brakes and a car stopped just centimetres away from him. Excuse me, are you all right? Thank God. For the first time in my life, I did not notice a pedestrian, said a frightened man approaching Scott. Didn't you see me? Did you forget your eyes at home? Scott grumbled, dissatisfied. He felt like he had seen the face of this driver before, but he couldn't remember where. Consider it so. I can compensate you for moral damage, said the man, staring at the stranger. Suddenly, he realised that it was the same man he saw at the apartment with Mia. Do you know Mia? he asked loudly. Of course I do. I'm her brother. You shouldn't have left Mia. You ruined her life for no reason. Ruined her life? Yes, that's right, I did. And not just for her, but for myself as well. Memories flooded Chad. He had met Mia, fallen in love, against his parents' wishes, broken up because of a ridiculous incident, and regretted it ever since. His marriage to Melena didn't work out. Melena preferred a reckless lifestyle, spending her father's and husband's money. There was not a drop of love in his marriage, and after six months, despite her father's pleas, they divorced. Chad was afraid to admit to himself that he couldn't forget Mia, he had driven her away, but love cannot be driven out of the heart. It still belonged to Mia. He didn't have the courage to admit his guilt for all these years. He was guilty of not listening to Mia and not giving her a chance to explain everything. Guilty of not meeting with her when Mia asked for it. He was guilty of not looking for Mia all these years. Although... Not a day went by without him thinking about her. What is this? Late remorse? Probably. What if it's still possible to get her back? I will definitely do it. Now. When, if not now, Chad thought. He felt like he was hit by an electric shock. Scott, tell me, where does Mia live? Please, I really need to see her. Where have you been before? When Mia and Julia were freezing and hungry in a cold apartment. When Mia, pregnant, spent all day cleaning the yard. Yeah, you were enjoying life with your millions, said Scott angrily. Chad, taken aback, replied, I didn't know anything. But Scott couldn't calm down. You didn't know anything. Oh yeah, that's indeed a good excuse. But maybe... You didn't want to know. Give me the address, please, asked Chad. He was in such a state of emotion that he did not notice Scott's insulting taunts. Calming down a little, Scott scribbled it on paper. Take it! Perhaps not everything is lost for you yet. Chad ran up the stairs to Julia's apartment. However, the girl responded shortly to his heart-wrenching monologue. Don't break the drama in two acts in front of me. You hurt Mia, hurt her badly. So it's up to her to decide whether you should be in her life or not. By the way, she should be back from work right now. At that moment, the door opened and Mia, emaciated and growing up, 
entered the apartment. Chad couldn't take his eyes off her, the same bottomless, infinitely familiar eyes, fragile shoulders, tender hands. Mia, his Mia. All the prepared speeches flew out of Chad's head, and he could only whisper softly, Forgive me. He looked into her eyes and understood. No, this is not the end. This is the beginning of something important and new in their lives. <laughs>